Welcome folks, Jason Hoppy here to show you how we can create some simple Celtic knots in Illustrator. I have two of them here, the Trinity or the Triangle with this ring interlocking within. And then I also have the two hearts, kind of the marriage um, symbol here. Simple forms using the Shape Builder tool to begin building these basic shapes. In order to build this Trinity, I'm gonna start off with a circle and I'm gonna hold down my Shift key to draw a perfect circle. I'm going to zoom in to this, go back to my selection tool, and I'm going to hold down my Option or Alt key to begin to duplicate this and also hold down my Shift key to drag this over. And I want to drag this a little past the halfway point here to get two circles. I'm going to select both of these with my selection tool and I'm going to use my Shape Builder tool, which is Shift M, which is this snowman on its side. And with my selected shapes, you'll notice that the cursor is in default add mode, which means when I'm using my Shape Builder tool, if I drag across multiple shapes, it adds them together. To get into subtract mode, I'm gonna hold down my Option or Alt key, and I'm going to subtract those areas which I don't want. Then, once I get this shape, I'm going to now take this shape here, and what I'd like to do is I'd like to rotate these shapes to get three different items here. And if I go in and I rotate this shape 120 degrees, you'll see what I can do. And I need three of these clover leaves or petals that you have, 0, 120, 240 degrees in order to create these three different shapes. But I'm going to copy this first by going under the edit menu and choosing copy. Then I'm going to go back under edit and I'm going to choose paste in place. And the paste in place is going to give me a copy of it right on top of itself right here. And it's weird because when it does this, for some reason, it gives me two copies of this. And I don't know why it does that. So if you just want to do a standard copy and paste, that's fine. I like the paste in place only because it puts it right on top. But for some reason, it gives me two. So I'm just going to do the copy paste. I'm going to rotate this pasted one 120 degrees and I'm going to move it over and I'm going to put it so that the curves match perfectly with the curves of my existing shape. Now I'm going to go into my outline mode, which is under the view menu, command or control Y. And I want to make sure that these are lined up perfectly. So trying to use my uh, mouse doesn't work very well. So what I'm doing is I'm using my up, down, left, right arrow keys to get these in the exact position. Now, your settings for your up, down, left, right arrow keys may be a little bit coarser than the ones that I have set. And you can easily fix that by going under your preferences menu under general and setting your keyboard increment to a very low number. Here I have it set to a fraction of a point. So when I move my shapes here, I can get very, very precise and get these overlapping with each other just where I want them to be. Now I'm going to go ahead and copy this shape again and then paste it and I'm going to rotate this shape 240 degrees. So 120, 240, 360 and I get my three petals here and I'm going to move those into position and again use my upright, up, left, down, right arrow keys to get that right into position and line those up as best as I possibly can. Okay. Now I'm going to go back into the view menu and go back under my command or control Y to view what's going on. Selecting these shapes, I'm going to beef up the weight of these lines here, say to about eight points. Then under the object menu, down to path, I'm going to outline these strokes to turn these into shapes. I'm going to use shift X, which is this little double ended arrow here, which swaps my fill for my stroke color. And I'm going to bump up the stroke weight a little bit here. Now what I'd like to do is I want to create this over underlap effect of these three to make this a continuous knot. So back to the Shape Builder tool, which is Shift M, and I'm going to then merge these together here so it looks like this pathway goes over. I want it to go under here, so I want to take this and merge those together to make this look like it's under. And then this is going to look like it's going over. So now I want to merge these together right here. And now what I end up with is I end up with my over 
under effects. Now you'll notice that these lines here are a little bit clunky and the reason why is I'm going to go back into outline mode and the reason why these lines are here is because I didn't line these up absolutely perfectly but that's not a big really big deal here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select my content again by using my selection tool and to get rid of these lines that I have here I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to go back to my shape builder tool and if I hover directly over these lines here with my option or alt key held down, this will just simply get rid of those paths and take those little paths, those little stragglers away as I go over because it's difficult to get these to line up absolutely perfectly where they go. But if I hold down my option or alt key and click on the paths, then I'm going to get rid of those little stragglers. Now you'll notice that some of this content looks like it's a little bit jagged, okay? Well, there's a quick and easy way to fix this. If you go into your stroke panel and you click on your stroke and you go into your corners here and your corners are no longer square, you round those corners, what that's gonna do is that's gonna get rid of all those little jagged edges and also nicely rounds any of your corners there. So it kind of cleans that up really well. So with this, I now have my kind of interlocking petals. Now I'm going to go back in and I'm going to put my cursor right in the center here and I'm going to hold down my option or alt key. I'm going to draw another circle here and I'm just going to kind of move this so that it's optically in the center as well. Okay. And what I'm paying attention to is I'm paying attention to this being in the center of this kind of apex shape and then making sure that these three sections match in equal space. I'm going to bump this up to eight points because that was what I had used before and just double check that I've got nice overlap here and nice spacing in those three little quadrants. Then I'm going to go into the object menu, go under path, I'm going to outline the stroke, use my shift X to sw switch the fill for the stroke and then I'm going to bump that back up so that I get that same line weight that I had with my other object. There we have it. Now zooming back out so I can kind of see my reference here, I see that each one of the petals goes in and out and in and out through those petals. So I'm going to select this entire shape. Then I'm going to go into my Shape Builder tool. And what I do is I go in with my Shape Builder tool, zoom in a little bit more so you can see. I'm going to follow along this path to add these together. And so the areas that I want to go underneath, I'm going to choose my overlapping path to then merge those together. And then follow my existing path to overlap and then go along my overlap path to make it look like it underlaps. Overlap on my following path, go ahead and underlap right there. And then take a look at that, and there we have our trinity, our triangle here, with our circle going in and out. Now this is all a stroke around here, so I can easily change the color of all of this, and it's all one shape. And that's how you go in and you create that trinity. When you're doing this kind of marriage knot here, this is pretty simple. And this is going to, let me just move this over here. This is going to be a rectangle. And what I'm going to do with my rectangle, instead of drawing one, I'm simply going to click. In this rectangle, what I want is I want whatever width that you want, just make sure the height is triple your width. Okay, so here I have a width of 50. I'm going to make the height triple that. So basically, one thirds, um, the width will be one third the height. With my rectangle, I'm going to come back in with my direct selection tool, select just the top portions. I'm going to drag my corner widgets all the way in so I get a rounded top. Go back to my selection tool, hover over the outside edge, hold down my shift key to turn that 45 degrees. I'm then going to copy and paste that whole section right there and make sure I copy and paste the whole thing. Hold down my shift key and then I'm going to shift and rotate the opposite direction 45 degrees. I want to line these up perfectly so I'm going to go under my outline mode which is going to be command or control Y and I'm going to position those so that they meet exactly up on each other right there so that they fit. Beautiful. That looks great. Okay, So there is my crossover right there. Now I'm going to boost the stroke up here to a weight that I like, like so. And then I'm going to go into the object menu. I'm going to go under path and I'm going to outline the stroke. I'm going to do my shift X to flip the fill and the stroke right here. And then I'm going to copy and paste this whole section. 
rotate this 180 degrees and then I'm going to bring this back down in here and what I want to do is I want to line this up perfectly to where these centers are going to overlap and my lines are going to line up perfectly okay so I'm going to go into my command or control Y and then I'm going to make sure that these lines line up exactly here where they should in the centers so that my overlap is touching right where it should and your eyes go kind of buggy when you go ahead and do this so there is my overall shape right there I'm going to bump up the stroke weight a little bit so we can see now the same method that we used in the Trinity to go in and do the overlap and the underlap I can use this reference here I can see where I want to over and underlap my objects okay select everything with the selection tool use your shift M and I do this every single time um, that's shift M because command M is going to hide the entire application so shift M and now what I want to do is I want to begin matching my overlap and underlap here so if this is going to overlap there I'm going to do that and then this comes down here and I'm going to underlap right there and then I go across section here and I go with it here to overlap and then I do the cross section here to underlap with it to overlap and so on all around there and make sure I get this last one right here so shift M right there and then I want this one to come in right there and join those together so that it underlaps any little tangents that you have here you can always go back in to your stroke panel and go in and just kind of round your corners and that will clean up your little tangents right there so now we've got our underlap overlap underlap over under over under over all the way around in this continuous shape pretty cool and that's how you do these kind of cool Celtic knots using the shape builder tool it's fun it's simple it does take a few tries it's best if you have some type of reference here that I just took a screenshot of and then see where the over and underlap works but give it a try it is a lot of fun